require imagination and faith. And I want you to take a minute, not a whole minute, a minute's actually a really long time, but take a little bit of time and really think that maybe you are. They really might be watching this right now. It's unlikely, it's unlikely that they're actually watching it. It's probably, I mean, think about if you had built like a big MMORPG, right? It's unlikely that the game creators are actually zoomed into your individual tile right now. But either way, there is a tile for, for them to zoom into. Uh, so I have a, I have a short uh, clip from Rick and Morty. <laughs> What's wrong? I had a nightmare. I was with an old man. He put a helmet on me. It's just a fever. Get some sleep. I don't want you missing school on Monday. I want you kids to look around you today and think about your future. Now is the time in your life where anything is possible. I just think it's time to get realistic. <laughs> Have you talked to my father about the carpet store? Roy? <sighs> Had we caught it sooner. Well, hindsight is 2020, Roy. What's important is that we move quickly. I'm not ready to die. You're not going to. <laughs> hey, thanks for the carpet, Roy. Persian off-white shacks for the clearance sale. Whoa! Shit! Shit! Oh. Uh. What the hell? Whoa, whoa, where am I? It's been about years. Not bad, Morty. You kind of wasted your 30s though with that whole bird watching phase. Morty, you were just playing a game. It's called Roy. Snap out of it. Come on. <laughs> Are you sure that that's not what happens to you when you're done? <laughs> but really, you, you, you know, again, I was, I was raised atheist, and you, you dismiss the notion of the afterlife, and you dismiss the notion of, of heaven as like almost a childish uh, fantasy. But why is this not true? Like, why is this, if, Let's say, let's even say, let's even go a little more earthly here. Let's say that future me is bored. And like, I write myself a video game. I don't want to enjoy the game, right? I mean, if you really want to enjoy games in the future, you're going to need to selectively mute certain parts of the memory. And clearly that's what happened there, right? So maybe, uh, maybe these were the greatest years of my life. And in the future, I create a video game so I can replay them. And that's where I am right now. Now, I'm not sure about this. I'm not willing to die to find out. But how do you know? Now, it's easy to dismiss this. It's easy to just be like, no, 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 I've been set in my ways for many, many years. But there's no real proof or evidence that this isn't true. Um, Let's talk about I have a little a story I made up. It's called The Parable of the Cage Tiger. It's about a tiger in a zoo. Um, but it's a nice zoo. It's not like a sad zoo where we put the tiger in a small cage. It's not like that. It's a nice zoo, and the tiger is in a beautiful, lush meadow uh, with plenty of room to roam. And in his youth, he does roam. He roams from the fake wall on one side to the fake trench on the other side. And he knows intellectually that tigers are in zoos. And that zoos keep tigers in cages. But he sees no evidence for this cage. Remember, he's a tiger. He only has a tiger brain. And when he walks around, he can't seem to think anything. He can't seem to find any evidence. So he goes on and Hunts as a tiger, has a nice tiger family. Nice tiger family. <laughs> he dies a nice tiger death. <laughs> Never that bothered by the fact that he's in a cage. 
Now come to you. You're a human. You live your nice human life. Maybe you haven't been to space, but you've heard that humans have been there. <laughs> you haven't been to the bottom of the ocean, but you heard James Cameron's been there. <laughs> so you, you're, you're pretty confident that you're not in a cage. Well, but so was the tiger. And what the tiger doesn't see is the zookeeper. <laughs> the zookeeper is so much smarter than the tiger. And I think this is an idea that is finally starting to, to be accepted. Like, if you think of yourself as an intelligent agent, um, even the dumbest humans are far smarter than the smartest monkeys. Um, but that's, it's easy to imagine things that are so much smarter than you. And they could build a cage that you couldn't recognize. Who is your zookeeper? This is impossible for you to conceive. Just as the tiger, you, you can't imagine something smarter than you. Or you can imagine it, but you can only imagine it in the vaguest terms. If you could imagine a chess player that was as good as Garry Kasparov, you could use your imagination to play chess as good as Garry Kasparov, right? Just ask your imagination what the imaginary version would do, and you have the right move. You can't imagine this zookeeper. But you can't rule it out. So if we're in a video game, are you a player character or a non-player character? <laughs> What's the difference? The difference I like is player characters know that they're in a game. All right. Maybe we'll do this. Show of hands, how many people seriously consider this as a possibility? <laughs> cool. All right, so how do we get out? <laughs> <laughs> so we're probably running in a data center somewhere. <laughs> It looks like this. It's futuristic. Data up there. It's not here. The data center is not here. I want you to think about the computer that's running Skyrim. The computer <laughs> running Skyrim is not in the Skyrim world. <laughs> Alfred Stormcloak could walk from the Dragon Mountains all the way down to the you know, Lazy Ridge, and you wouldn't find any evidence of the computer. Uh, so you're not going to find any evidence of the data center looking around here. Um, but what if we could? Let's hack into the computer running the simulation and rewrite the operating system's nature. <laughs> Every bad thing that happens in the world today, murder, rape, death, illness, losing $20, dropping on the sidewalk, happens because the laws of nature allow these things. If we could hack into the computer running nature, we could change the rules. We could change the rules governing our simulation. It sucks that we're not in control of it. We're put here. I really, like, I, I really believe this stuff. Like, I sit here, like, I look around at me, and I'm like, I was put here. I, wasn't, I didn't ask to be born. Um, and it seems like I'm in somebody else's simulation. When I was uh, when I was uh, eight, I played this game a lot. <laughs> and then Super Mario World, SNES. I used to go to my aunt's house, like go in a basement, and play this game. And I probably put I put hundreds of hours into it. And I wanted I wanted to unlock all the all the secrets of the game. And when I'm nine, I go to Toys R Us and Jeffrey Bucks. And Toys R Us was still around. I bought a Game Genie. You guys remember these? Yeah. So you could you put in the you unplug the Super uh, Mario World cartridge, you plug it into the top of the Game Genie, you plug the Game Genie back into the Nintendo, and you could give yourself infinite lives. You could make it so the enemies didn't affect you. You could always give yourself wing cap that you couldn't lose. It's nice. And this even in a low consequence world. You know, today's world, if you think there's any real consequences. 
think of what we could change. Now, I'm not sure I want them, you know, unplugging the cartridge on the universe. <laughs> I don't know how the save states work. Um, I don't even know, like, how we'd ask God to put the game genie in. But do we have to? So this video is from Master June at AGDQ 2014. And it's a Super Mario uh, speedrun of sorts. <laughs> So what happened? Um, he did a lot of weird stuff. Moved a bunch of shells around. Moved a bunch of Goombas. Jumped on a bunch of people. Did some weird stuff with Yoshi. Uh, what that was doing was setting up the memory of the meta computer in such a way that after he triggers the final exploit, the, ex the processor jumps to his arbitrary code. There are no Pong and Snake minigames hidden in Super Mario World. Those were completely injected. That is arbitrary code execution on the Super Mario World game. Um, so Seth Ling did a bunch of YouTube videos about this as well. Uh, and that is a hex editor actually running inside of Super Mario. And that's the hex editor hex editing itself. So if you're Mario, now you might think, OK, well, what does it mean to be Mario? Assume that Mario is an intelligent agent. Assume that Mario is the kind of agent that can think. Right? And we're, we're kind of there, if you guys have seen like GPT-2 and stuff. Um, we have agents that are capable of like uh, thinking, and maybe they do start to think about how to get out. Mario could do Mario science. He'd figure out when he put shells in weird places that weird things happen. We kind of see like things like this in our universe. We just call them physics. Maybe there's weird quirks. Maybe we could actually get in some like like if you're exploiting a system, if you're exploiting like a computer. Uh, a lot of the things you'll do are at best going to like crash the computer. 
Maybe that's equivalent, like, you know, you get like a black hole, right? That's when the universe is just like, I'm not simulating this. <laughs> but what if you could, like, put it in weird states, right? This is the question. Where do we start to get at the, you know, the, the states? And the, uh, the takeaway is, is that it's possible to take actions here that affect the upper world. Um, it, it kind of has to be. There is no way in a simulation that we built to have state represented only in that world. I mean, the state has to be represented in this world as well. So for us, when we do things here, we have to be affecting things in the upper world. When we move, when I move, whatever's tracking me has to change some physical state in the upper world. So it's possible to take an action. And we just need to figure out kind of what the action space is, mm -hmm. how we can get at X millennia. But I wanted to, it's about imagination. How do you imagine really doing this? Being in a basement, sitting at a computer, and typing some stuff in, and starting to see exploits, starting to see places where this universe breaks down. <laughs> we are in a video game. I don't know about the people out there. <laughs> um, I heard another thing when I was younger, another one of these let's debunk religion kind of things, uh, that your soul weighs 21 grams. Some guy showed this, weighed a body waited for the body to, to die and showed that it lost 21 grams of weight. This is obviously absurd. Uh, this wouldn't even make sense even if you believed a religious view of souls. But to give information-based arguments for why we can't, why there's no afterlife, they, they don't really hold up because it's out of band. Um, it's, imagine you have a, a kernel and it's running a bunch of user space processes. We're a user space process in the simulator computer. The kernel can access any of our memory without us knowing. In fact, they can pause the simulation whenever they want without us knowing as well. Right? If the simulation follows some kind of uh, uh, rules. Um, so, you know, there's no reason that anything would have to be physically detectable in this world for even like an afterlife of souls to be real. Um, look at this guy. The soul has an address in RAM. <laughs> um, so this brings me to the next part of the talk. Uh, what, are, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> But like, really, if you start to believe this stuff, a lot of people, okay, there's a lot of people out there who do nothing. As far as I can tell, like, I really, I don't know what they're doing, what they're trying to accomplish. And then you have, like, okay, a bunch of people who are like, we are going to acquire our power. Um, many shapes and forms. In today's world, it's much better to go these very uh, uh, circuitous routes to acquire power. You know, you can't just stand up in front of an audience and say, I want to acquire power. Uh, it's frowned upon to this um, I told you it's offensive. It's offensive. Uh, but a lot of these people, they stop at power over people. People who want to go into politics, people who want to be CEOs, what they're looking for is power over people. Even people who want to make a lot of money, what fundamentally does money buy you? Uh, there's a great uh, sci-fi book set in the uh, prime intellect universe. It goes into the root of all money is really human suffering. Um, I'm not sure that's exactly true, but I mean, kind of. Money just really buys you power over people. But what if you don't care? I want power over nature. It's much more fundamental. We're all running. If nature is the computer that's running us, we're all running on nature. Uh, so I started a company a few years ago, a car AI. Um, I'm about to have a lot of money. Uh, there's kind of only one thing worth doing. 
like security. I'm, right. I'm stuck in this low world. Where do you get that? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so, I don't know, I, I really, I, I wonder, I wonder from a like, brain science perspective, if these are the same kind of thoughts that people who, and today it gets a really bad rap, but the kind of people who were religious previously thought about. I, I wonder if these are the similar sort of thought patterns. I'm always asking the question, how much of um, these views are due to uh, my... Ugh, the word personal bias is so taken to mean something else today. But I mean it like the rationality stance. Like, like I, my bias is encoded in my human architecture, right? Um, there was a great book, Elephant in the Brain, uh, by Robin Hanson. I just want to read more about that stuff. But um, this is an Eminem quote. Uh, the cells padded and battered like someone else had it before me, and they just kept throwing their fucking cells at That's how I feel. That's how I feel in this world. Like, what else are we doing? We all run around in the little simulator, and I don't think, oh, great. Uh, so I'm thinking about starting a church. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> um, I mean, see, so okay, I started a company, right? You think about, there's a lot of almost structural problems with companies, and one of the biggest is there's no real way to win. Uh, you think about two people playing chess, and no matter who wins the chess game, the board gets put away, and everybody can walk away with more respect for the game. Um, with companies, this isn't really true. Kind of, there's only a way to, to lose. Um, oh, you win with your acquisition. Not really, you just pass the board off to somebody else. Uh, so I, I feel like churches might be much more aligned with these sort of goals. And the goal of the church would be to redirect society's efforts into getting out. <laughs> so a quick aside. <laughs> How does magic work? Not like the card game, but like, it's about like Harry Potter, right? You, you wave a wand and you say the right words in the right order and you control the physical world. We have something a lot like this today. It's just much less sexy. Magic has a certain sexiness to it, right? Um, and you always think, I remember, I remember I first reading like Harry Potter, and you think, man, if I was in this world, I would study so hard. I would try so hard to be so good at magic. But then you realize that there really is something like magic right here. It's programming. Um, when I was 15, I read Eliezer Yudkowsky's early writings on like seed AIs and stuff. And you realize that right now, with the amount of compute power available in the world, if you typed the right stuff, you could, like, take over the world. I think we're well past the point where, like, the right floppy disk's worth of information will get you everything. Um, how many people have played Paperclip Simulator and got to the Hypnodrones, right? Eh? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's this. We're, we're, we're at the point. I don't know how close you guys think the singularity is. To me, it seems very close. But now, like, what do we do? If, if, we, if we go through the singularity and we still have the same sort of motivations that we have right now, namely power over people, mm. the world's going to be horrific. <laughs> um, maybe if we go through the singularity with the right goal, goals that are actually more in line with our newly acquired powers, uh, like power over nature. Um, so I uh, think about, like, what does it mean to start a church today? Um, I think about like buying a nice like estate compound somewhere. Um, I'm like starting to really work on it, I'm trying to get the right people together, and starting to say, what does it mean to get out? Um, and no, I mean no quackery, no 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 crap. Everything you say better be like rationally justifiable. I'm a big fan of rationality. Um, I'm a big fan of. Uh, empirical, uh, and, and everything you say, like, a lot of this stuff, you, you can reject something if something is not falsifiable, right? Like, sometimes people will get caught up in arguments that that argument just isn't, it's not even wrong. There's no experiment that could show one side or the other, but I don't think this stuff falls under that. I think there are 
experiments we can do that will start to probe at the nature of what the computer running the simulation is. We've done some. If you remember the, uh, uh, how much quantum physics do I really know? Um, <laughs> like the bell inequality. Right? And they built, they built a machine to actually verify the bell inequality and that there really is no local hidden state. They built a machine in a basement in a state compound somewhere, probably in an academic lab before the universities went the way they did. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. It's an idea. I'm thinking about it. Do it. Um, but it seems like, I don't know, what's next? It seems like it's worth doing. Hmm. All right. Denouement. Ever see Clerks? I like that. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, I'm almost 30. Like, this is from Rise of Nations. Attrition. A lot of things are attrition. Think about buying a house, who's gonna dust the furniture? Right, like it's all these little things that just chip away at you. And on a biological level, biology is chipping away as, uh, at me as well. Um, they're, you know, uh, it's just the, the wear and decay and there's a, this isn't just happening to me, this isn't just happening to my house, this is happening to the entire universe and it's called entropy. Um, so if you guys studied, this was high school chemistry, uh, energy can't be created or destroyed. Um, it seems like also that there's a finite amount of energy in the universe, but this isn't true about entropy. Entropy is a measure of almost useful energy. And the amount of entropy in a closed system only goes up. So everything that we do, the rough maybe people talk about it in terms of like order and disorder. Every time you want to create order somewhere, you're creating immense disorder somewhere else. You're actually creating more disorder than you are creating order. Entropy goes up. Um, some physicists talk about entropy in terms of this is time. This is what we experience as time, uh, entropy increasing. Um, so if, I don't know if you guys have looked, but I think this is even non-controversial. You guys all do live in the universe. Um, so this is our history, a fairly non-controversial history. Uh, and we're up to the point where like life on Earth begins. Maybe we're a little bit after that. Big bang, and then everything kind of swirled around and came together. Um, have you guys looked at the projections of what happens next? So here we are. Uh, at present day. Um, everyone knows the sun's gonna burn out. Maybe people kind of joke about it. Uh, but, oh, don't worry, humanity will be an interplanetary species by then. We'll just get on the spaceship <laughs> and we'll go to the next planet. Well, some bad news for you. That sun's gonna burn out, too. Oh, but we'll go to a galaxy that's full of young stars. Well, eventually that seems to run out, too. Uh, when people talk about living forever, really, I don't know how serious they are. But if entropy keeps going up, the universe eventually becomes cold and dark to the point that you can't even form atoms anymore. All the protons and electrons are just kind of floating around, and to put them together into atoms would require too much useful work to actually do that. Um, so I'm not obviously the first person to think about this. Uh, there's a great story by Isaac Asimov called The Last Question. Um, I think people have read it, it's a short story. Uh, if you haven't, really go read it. It's really great. Um, I don't, I'll tell you what the, what the last question is. And the last question is, how can the amount of entropy in the universe be decreased? If we don't answer this question, we're dead. Uh, on a long enough time span, we're dead. Uh, so, I mean, again, this might just be like moving to another galaxy, but it might be better than that. Because we think the universe... I mean, we think the universe all obeys the same physical laws. Um, we think entropy, this, this stuff, is, is true about our universe. But it doesn't say anything about the meta-universe. So we have to go up. Um, yeah, I'll post updates on my Instagram if you guys are interested. <laughs> and I'll take questions. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't know, it's a weird talk. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, do, do, do I actually believe it? Some days, yes. It's easy to get caught up in a lot of uh, really 
uh, worldly stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, when I'm lying alone in bed, this is the kind of stuff I think about. Right? A lot of people go through life with a lot of distractions. People find things to distract me. This is frustrating for me. There are actually some people who do this. Um, not everybody's like this, but when you really let go of distractions, you're left with the, 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 the big questions. And I had I had arrogantly accepted uh, atheism <laughs> for a large part of my life because I was raised that way, just like any other religious person. Um, but you start to realize that it really may not be true. And if this stuff is true, what can I do right now to live a better life in hopes of getting to heaven? Uh, all right, so we got the questions on here. Yeah, it's down there. Um, all right, can you guys see this?